In this demonstration, I'm going to review the dismantling aspects of the AutoSoft suite of products. The first thing I'm going to do is acquire a commercial vehicle for dismantling. Within the AutoSoft system, you set up some templates which can relate to either groups or types of vehicles such as I've set up here, so light commercial vans in this case, or I could set up a template specific to a certain kind of vehicle if I commonly wrecked say one kind of van, I say it was I was wrecking uh, sprinter vans or transit vans, I could actually set up say half a dozen or a dozen different templates that relate to the kinds of vehicles I work with. In this example I'm going to use this template which is uh, light commercial miscellaneous vans and in this instance I'm going to make it a Mercedes Sprinter which I'm going to wreck and I've purchased this vehicle for $1800. The system here produces a um, what's a, a known as a, a template with all the major salvageable parts which relate to this kind of vehicle. Now because I'm using the light commercial miscellaneous vans I may set up the relevant details for that particular van that's being acquired. In this case it's a Mercedes Sprinter uh, and it's a van. The colour is white manual. The rego, if the vehicle has a rego, and the build date, 10th 02, speedo, VIN number, engine number, and the engine type. Now I'm going to nominate this as a Form 2B acquisition meaning it's a, a complete vehicle and I want to record it in the um, Form 2B or the police book. I then select the supplier who the vehicle is coming from, CQ Broker in this instance, and with that in place I can then save. I'm just going to save this acquisition. I'm not going to process it yet because I'm not sure of the condition of the actual parts. which are on the van. So what I'm going to now do is go into the template for um, miscellaneous vans and I'm going to print a report here. Now this report is what's known as the condition report and I'm going to give this to one of my dismantlers to actually assess the van and give me some details on the condition and any comments that relate to the key salvageable parts on this particular vehicle. You can see here all the different uh, all the different items which I've nominated in my particular template that I might want from that, that particular um, kind of vehicle. So I print this out, hand it to one of my dismantlers to get the information from them about what it is that um, we want to actually take. Once I get that information back from my dismantler, I would want to uh, recall to the screen my Mercedes Sprinter here, which is waiting for me to come along and document the condition of the parts. Now, in here, I may have a um, I may have a condition system that I use, uh, possibly A through to D or one through to ten. Now, the system's quite flexible in that regard I can put in something like this is a condition 7, uh, this is in condition 8, perhaps in condition 9, uh, this might be rated A, this one might be rated C. These, the system will allow you to come up with your own uh, referencing system for condition. Now there's other things such as the airbag, the front passenger airbag perhaps is not salvageable and that's when I can untick that from the acquisition here. So let's say these particular parts couldn't be salvaged from the vehicle and these was the um, you know the condition status of the you know the remaining parts not not all parts need to have a condition status but um, so it's quite flexible you can do what you like with in that regard the 
the next thing I want to do is is actually process this um, van into my stock. So, in that regards, the we've taken the van. The dismantler has actually probably dismantled much of the van at this stage, given me complete condition report on the the different pieces, and I want to bring this actually into stock so I can start to sell the parts of this this old vehicle. So to do that. What I'm going to do here, you can see these um, cost and sell prices which are set up here in the template. I simply just hit recalculate here and you can see the, the system responds accordingly to enable us to bring these parts into inventory at the relevant cost. So if that was uh, $2,300, um, I simply just recalculate the cost price again and the cost price will change accordingly so that all these parts come into stock at the correct price now. This is a two cent rounding change I'll just make there which I can do also just simply changing. And I can do that with any of the parts in fact if I want to bring them in at a different cost I can actually manually change them at that time and um, put some up, some down, however, however I want to bring them in. Um, once that's done I hit the process button and I can bring that actual vehicle now into stock. In this first example, I'll sell a part, a recycled part over the counter to a cash customer. So just as I would do in the normal AutoSoft part system here, I'm going to raise a cash sale. Select my details there. Now, all I've got here is simply, I've gone in and I've created these part codes. These aren't obviously real part codes, but I've made um, uh, codes such as, you know, R audio here for a recycled audio unit. Now, you can see here, I can just add recycled audio unit to the actual um, invoice here. Now it can be generic like that or it can be very specific. It might be an audio unit out of a particular vehicle that has specific functions. You can get as detailed with the, the part codes as you like. What's important is that um, the system actually will tell you here which stock number it is you're selling. So obviously you're going to sell a particular recycled audio unit and in this case let's say it was for this Mercedes Sprinter here uh, and we're going to sell this uh, Mercedes Sprinter recycled audio equipment on this invoice. So it's going to come up there at um, $200 which is the price I had set for it in the system. So um, add something else on there. I might select um, something like this uh, recycled major body section and that can be off this particular vehicle here. What, what will happen obviously is as you um, sell these they're going to uh, be taken out of stock and no longer be in that available list. That list shows you all of the available major body sections I have of that type in stock. So once again if I was doing a specific template which was just a say VG Transit uh, 86 to 88 or something like that and I wanted to have the particular parts for that particular van detailed in its own template it would be as specific as that when I was selecting the recycled um, product code here to put onto the customer's invoice so as simple as that I can uh, finalize the invoice um, put 660 there sell the part over the counter to this customer as a, as a cash sale. Now, same principle applies in the, in the workshop. Let's say I was doing a repair on a Mercedes Sprinter and I wanted to put a, um, a recycled part on it. Uh, come into the, um, the list here, select a, a vehicle out of the um, vehicle database which I'm working on and it's as easy as coming in here and adding adding the part I'm after. So in this case it was a recycled bonnet for example. Tab across, uh, put the quantity on there, it asks me which stock number it relates to and it's number 38 for example and I can put item number 38 onto the invoice as well as labour and um, any other parts from my you know standard workshop system 
that I might want to add on here. So I've got recycled and new parts and labour on the invoice there for the customer. So if that was complete, I could then finalise that and it would um, print out accordingly on the customer's uh, invoice that it was a um, recycled part as per the description there. So we can see we've got um, the labour con component of the invoice as well as the parts being the recycled bonnet and it tells me the stock number, VIN and engine number that that part actually came from as well as the new part there which was that um, idle speed actuator. Now when it comes to the statutory side of things there's the Form 2A and the Form 2B which are automatically produced by the system off the back of the data that you enter in. Let's have a quick look at the uh, 2A here. So what this has done, it's produced the Form 2A off the back of the acquisitions we've done. It gives us the details of the vehicle, uh, make, model, uh, manufacture, VIN, odometer, etc. The people we've purchased the vehicle from and then goes through the prescribed parts and nominates basically based off the condition report and what we said we did and didn't salvage at the time of sell of dismantling and an acquisition puts the correct status onto the prescribed parts register here. Now you also will see because we're tracking the the parts through the system too as we're selling them the date of disposal and the receipt number is generated here too so and you can easily go and recall that back from the system that re, um, receipt and demonstrate who those parts were sold to and where the parts came from and obviously you can uh, produce an inventory report of what you've got in inventory and the complete circle of the the two a parts um, can be displayed if in and under the circumstances of, of an audit happening. Now back on the reports here too we've also got the Form 2B register which is produced automatically off the back of the system too. So you can also um, purchase those parts off the shelf and the Form 2B pres prescribed parts register here will produce all the ne necessary statutory requirements to um, demonstrate where these actual parts have come from, uh, who they were acquired from, the uh, engine VIN number from the vehicle they came off of, and so on and so forth. So the the system uh, aims to reduce the amount of uh, administration and statutory compliance work that you need to do when running a dismantling operation also.